Hey guys, it's Kimberly and um, I am in the workshop and it is early and um, I wanted to get on here because I didn't know if our power was going to last. Um, we are in under an ice storm here in North Carolina, which is where I'm broadcasting from. So um, I just thought that maybe I would come early and do a little bit here and um, maybe we could share this live um, again at 7 on our Facebook page. So. Um, I just wanted to jump on here and show you some of the things that I have been working on. And um, I am still working on, I know something happened with our video the last time we were on. I don't know exactly what was going on or um, what went on in the airways. But anyway, um, that whole video was lost. And basically what we were doing is we were doing a rundown on this piece where we cleaned it with our white lightning cleaner. And I did come in here and I did sand a little bit because I could feel some um, of this texture on this piece and so I did knock it down. I also knocked down the top. I sanded it and um, that way I could um, apply my paint to a smooth surface. So some of the areas where the, chip, the paint was chipped and things of that nature, I did sand that, um, some of it with 80 grit and then came back in with a fine 220 over the top of that. So in some cases, it is important that you prep your pieces. So um, the whole reason I'm coming early right now, and like I said, I'll share this again on our Facebook page, is so that um, if the weather, inclement weather kind of messes us up later on, I will at least have this out there for you guys because I know we normally are here Tuesday, Thursdays at 7 p.m. So I did um, go ahead on that last video, which I know was lost somewhere. Um, it only showed a little clip right at the end for whatever reason. The um, I did add the Dixie Mud on a couple of chipped areas on this piece. So um, if you're with me, let me know. Um, thank you for uh, stopping if you were scrolling and you've just jumped on here. I know it's not a normal time, but maybe you guys are looking at your phones um, with nothing better to do but stare out the window at the ice storm. So. <laughs> And it is bad. We had a lot of it everywhere. So um, if you guys are in our area, please stay safe and um, stay warm. As you can hear, I have a heater running in the background so that I can work. It is a little cool in here, probably 50 degrees inside um, this workshop. So it's a little bit colder than I prefer. Um, I would prefer it to be a little warmer for my paint. Um, however, I can do it. It's just the cure time's just going to be a little bit longer. So if you're like me in a northern state, just add some cure time on it because um, obviously with this damp weather and everything, it's going to be a little bit longer. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started sanding this Dixie Mud. So what Dixie Mud is, I had it sitting here. It is a paste. It kind of works like a um, Bondo. It gets tenaciously hard. I do use it in um, non-structural locations. If it's a structural location, I will add um, Dixie. I will add, um, instead of Dixie Bell, Dixie's Mud, I will use the Bondo. But since this was not in a structural area, I wasn't concerned about that. I was just concerned about filling a little nick out of these so that um, when I sand it, I can um, paint over the top of it and not have any issues and you won't see it. So I'm just going to knock that back and I will... Um, I think I may have put those products. No, I do have them here. Just so that I can show you. So this is the Dixie Mud. It does come in a paste. So those of you who didn't view that other live because we had trouble, this is what it looks like inside. Almost looks like spackling. Um, it kind of works in the same way, only it gets tenaciously hard. And this is our white lightning cleaner, which is what I cleaned this piece with. It's a powder cleaner. You mix it with water and use it to clean your piece first. I always clean my pieces first and do my repairs because it kind of gets me in tune with the piece. Kind of gets in my head and makes me kind of figure out where I'm going with the piece and, um, and how I want to um, how I want to paint the piece. So um, the Dixie Mud has been on here since Tuesday, so that's a couple of days to dry. I have some 80 grit paper here and I'm just going to knock it back on the excess of it anyway. And you could do this with a finer sandpaper, which I thought I had a little finer around here, but I'm just gonna knock the, the rough part of it back. I overfill, I always overfill so that when I come in and um, get ready to paint, I have plenty to knock off so it looks, um, so you don't notice it as much. I always like to give it a little bit more than it needs so that when I do put the paint on, 
Let me see if I have my thin. I have a um, very fine grit. This is a, um, let's see what this one is. I believe this is like a 320 grit maybe. It's a real, real fine one. I'm just gonna use the fine one over there. The only reason I'm going back over it with the fine is to make sure that there's not any um, scratches from that super rough sanding paper that I used. I'm just gonna knock it back because there was a little notch um, chunked out of there and I wanted to fix that. And I have a couple down here as well on the bottom that you can also see. Hopefully my phone won't jump off. So here's a big chunk right here. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. You see how easy it is to file it back and just kind of sand it back with my 80 grit. Then I'll come in with a little finer sandpaper. This is just prepped to um, fix those notches that were knocked off of it. Probably just getting moved around. It got moved around a little bit on the rough and it took a couple of chunks out of it. So I kind of want to file that, sand that back a little bit, obviously. So it blends when I go to paint over the top of it. You take my finer paper, just switching them back and forth so it's nice and smooth. That way my paint goes on nice and smooth. That's all I'm doing here. Knocking it back so that big notch isn't missing out of it. So I hope everybody is staying warm. Put you some food on early today. I know I did put some food in the crock pot, got that all cooking so that if we were to lose power, at least my food would be cooked. So I started that relatively early. My hair is trying to get in my way, y'all. So we got that going. I'm just gonna take my baby wipe now and just kind of knock any dust back because I don't want the dust. Um, always get more than one of these. And so I'm just gonna knock that dust back off my piece because I don't want it, don't want to sand um, over or paint over any sanding stuff. And since I am on this particular, I'm cleaning it up off my floor too, because I'm kneeling down in it. Now that's sanding dust. And just kind of cleaning that up a little bit, get that out of my way. And then um, I am going to, I've already kind of cleaned all this down prior to us coming on so that I would have my piece relatively um, wipe down and wipe the top down just to get the dust off of it. Now I am not using the silk on this line on this particular one. I did promise that we would flip back and forth using our um, silk line as well as our chalk line. So I am using the chalk line on here and it is cold. My piece is cold. It's not warm. So that may cause your paint to kind of drag slower across your, however, I have my paint indoors. So my paint is not cold. So if you find that it is dragging just because of the temperature a little bit, you can add mist bottle water. Since I, and this is a, you can see that very, very fine mist water bottle. So um, we are not soaking anything by any means. We might just kind of have to help the brush from, but we will see how well it'll do. Shouldn't have any trouble. And when you're using the chalk mineral line, we always start with a damp brush. So you sorry about that. I got a call coming in. And uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to just go ahead and um, get started here using the chalk mineral line. And I chose the Savannah Mist. I love this color on this style of furniture. It always gives it a very vintage vibe. And so that's kind of what I'm going for. And I'm gonna pull y'all in. Since, um, sorry, bobbling you around, I do have a little desk over here in the corner that I'll be working on as well. I'm gonna get started. I think, yeah, you guys can see that. You don't need to see me and give you guys an idea of now back to the chalk mineral line. So um, you can wet it if you needed to. As you can see, it's gonna be a very lovely 
blue and I can feel already just painting. I can already tell huh, that it's going to drag a little bit just because the, the, um, just because it's cold and that's to be, that's to be expected in this temperature. So it is a little chilly out. But that's okay. I mean, it's not gonna hurt it. It's just gonna hinder your dry time a little bit. And those of you who know me, know I'm going right over the top of this old hardware. Cause you're gonna see, I just even if I just did one drawer and show you guys um, the difference a coat of paint will make on an old piece. Yes, this all makes it look 1970s probably uh, style, maybe even maybe even older. Pull that out because I keep getting paint there. So yes, I do paint. I do paint my hardware. And while it looks a mess, and I am barely touching, and that helps get some of the um, brush strokes away. So I am barely touching it. It's just, it's flowing on pretty good, all things considered. And then I'm gonna get right up under here so I think, I think I was going to do the top of this. I'm not going to worry too much about it because I may do that. I'll have to debate on that. I may do that in the coffee bean. Sometimes I change it up a little bit where there's a contrast between the two. And then again, who knows? I may paint it all the same color. I don't think it's as much the paint having issues as it is my hands feeling like they're freezing off because it is chilly. And I'm not used to working in those cold climates because I like it. I like it a little bit warmer when I'm working. I'm gonna turn you this way a little bit more so you can kind of see. So this is the Savannah Mist and you see, I don't even have a whole full bottle, but that's okay because it's not gonna take a whole bottle to paint this piece. As you can see, the coverage on with uh, Dixie Belle paint is amazing our coverage is grand you can see the coverage and you see that one coat coverage pretty much on here now i was planning on coming in and doing a blend on this and um around the hardware so when you know you're doing a blend you don't have to use quite as much paint because i know i'm going to come in here and do a little blending with the um drop cloth i believe is what i was planning and those two work really well together. So, so I leave some of it, because look how, how Victorian it's going to look. And that's just, when I'm, you see me coming back over, I'm just kind of hiding up my brush strokes, just kind of cleaning my brush strokes up. But do you see how, let me back you off a little bit can see how gorgeous that piece is going to look um, being the complete piece all done just like that. So um, it's going to give you a really good idea of how it's going to look. I always let um, my under color dry my other coat dry really well. Obviously in our climate it's going to be a little bit longer. Before I put my, top, my um, other color in to blend because of the fact if it's set, you're not gonna move it around when you're trying to blend, if that makes any sense. So if you haven't done much blending, that's, that's kind of a key thing. You, you want to uh, let your under color dry. And um, that's how I do it. Trying to, I don't try to do them together because it's too easy to slide your color and lose your color. You're under your base coat, your base color um, when you are blending because we are using water, so you can cause that to um, slide and move. But if you do it after it dries completely, then it doesn't seem to move on you when you are blending your colors together. So if that makes any sense, that's, that's how I do it. It makes it a little bit easier for me. And that's kind of why I wanted to get on here early, knowing that you guys um, are trying to stay dry and warm. And I thought 
you know, I got dinner on already. Um, why not? I could go out here and throw a quick video together and um, kind of show you how. I'm going to just do this one side because it's really kind of cool to see, you know, how, how it looked before and then how it's going to look after. Sometimes people can't see this over here being this over here. So a lot of times people just don't have the vision to see it. But um, on these videos, it helps bring that vision alive. And um, this is a piece I picked up from Habitat for Humanity in Kernersville. So don't pass up your, your, um, your this and that shops because a lot of times you can find some really good um, pieces at these stores. So um, that's why I thought maybe you guys can see those of you who there are some sometimes we have issues seeing beyond seeing beyond the ugly I guess or seeing beyond the age of a piece and um, and then when you do this and uh, somebody does this half and half and that gives you a really good visual on how it changes the whole look of the piece now all of a sudden we've got a piece that looks extremely Victorian you can't see these um, details underneath of it. Why at the time it was really pretty. The hardware just looks exquisite when you paint over the hardware. This is original hardware to the piece. And um, it always, to me, always makes the piece look so much better when you, when you can um, salvage the hardware. And I know a lot of people don't like painted. I saw some dust fly there. This had a fixed piece at the bottom, which um, I didn't do, was already pre-fixed, and I didn't even bother to mess with it. I just kind of left it. You know, some things, sometimes we have some little battle scars, and they just go along with, the, with what we've been through in life. So this piece has had, you know, had a, been around a few, been knocked around, and has a few battle scars, but I'm not at all try to take all of that away because that's where as you guys have heard me say before that's where the character is a lot of times the character is in that part of your piece and it may have an imperfection or two but it doesn't make it unusable you can still use the piece still functions properly pull that out just a tad and so you can just kind of see how I've just gone along and um, again I am going to do some blending in the middle so I think pretty sure I am and so when I do that I will work around that hardware when I do the blending you see how it's really not that hard I haven't used I'm still not even at half a jar here this was an already well loved jar of paint that I had already used so I'm just coming in here and yes, I did clean this piece. If you're just jumping on with us, I did clean and scuff sand this piece just because it had this detail. If you can feel it with your finger, you're going to see it with your eye on your piece. And if you don't want to see that, then you do want to scuff sand. Um, it really, um, and also it helps with the adhesion. And yes, I do my hardware. And I do it because it gives it that Victorian vintage vibe and I love that so um, that's why you'll see me paint that and i um, just going to continue on I'm using my um, Dixie Belle mini on this piece um, just because I have a lot of flat surface here not as much round surface as the last piece we were working on on that table set on that Jacobine set, we had a lot of round edges, and on this particular one, it's a lot of, a lot of flat areas. So I'm using the flat brush. That makes sense. So I'm just going to get in here and get me some paint on. And um, this is Savannah Mist, by the way. Again, if you've just joined us, thank you for jumping on with me. Hope you guys are warm and staying warm and dry. And I hope you have power still. One of the reasons I'm coming on a little bit early because as night falls and the wind maybe starts to blow or whatever, it might would have been hard to come on later. 
so I thought I would just come on now. See how pretty that's going to look when you, um, now this is the, um, this is the Dixie Belle chalk version. So you can see how it's just kind of drying up in here. Um, it's, it is, um, chalk paint dries a little bit quicker than a lot of other uh, paints out there. And um, that way, you know, you can kind of work with it. Um, if you feel it's drying on you too quickly, you can always just kind of mist your piece as, as you go along. Obviously, it's not gonna dry that fast on me because I'm working in a cold, it's a little chilly up here in North Carolina with our little ice storm we got going on outside. Moving you over because I'll just show you guys just how easy it is to um, get you a coat of paint on. And obviously I'm gonna let this dry in. Um, and then it'll obviously have to dry overnight, maybe a little bit longer, even though chalk paint does set up a little quicker than most of the other paints out there. Like an acrylic paint might would take a little bit longer. Just depends on what paint you're working with. And I'm work, I work with Dixie Bell paint products, so I know pretty much what our paints can do and how well they hold up to the climate and everything. Obviously, I would prefer it to be dry, be a little drier outside and a little bit warmer, but that's not what it's given us today. But thankfully, for the most part, most everybody that I know is um, doing okay and still has power. I'm gonna pull these out a little bit. That way they can not stick shut. Sometimes that'll happen. If that does happen, all you gotta do is just kind of wiggle your drawers and they'll come right open. So I'm going right over this um, already pre-stencil, whatever was on there. I did sand that down, by the way, so that I wouldn't be able to see it when I paint my piece. And again, I know I'm repeating myself, but I should be going back over this, uh, coming back in and blending a little bit with our um, drop cloth. I love Savannah Mist and drop cloth in a blend after it dries and come around and do some fading here. But that won't be today because obviously I need it to dry up. And I need some pieces. I need some pieces done um, for our locations. We're running a little bit low on some of them. So I need to get some work done and, and also beat the weather. Which is kind of hard since this is <laughs> this is what we're getting stuck with today with all this icy stuff outside. I wish it would have just snowed. I feel like we're being cheated. We get the ice and not the snow. The kids don't get to have quite as much fun with it as when it's snowing. You know, they can go out and have a good time in the snow. And this ice storm stuff, it's not the same thing. Not even close for the kids. It's kind of a bummer when they have that. So you can see it's really not that hard. Doesn't take very long. Just a little brush and um, you can just go at it. You get, get going on your pieces. I think even that in the climate out here, the paint is a little bit thicker in the jar because of the congealing maybe of the weather from the cold. So it's a little thicker than I care for it to be. But in this case, when I'm putting it on for this purpose, just, but you can see how wonderful the coverage is. I'm going over a white or a pretty creamy color with a very light color. And um, you can see how how quickly, and that had a little imperfection right there on the piece. I'm not overly worried about it. It's gonna add a little character to it when I go to blend. So, pull these out just a tad so that I'll get the tops of these. You're just seeing how relatively quick and easy um, it really is to just kind of upscale a piece of furniture that you see um, at uh, a retail store. And if you don't like the color or uh, the look of the piece, you can always grab you 
some paint and upscale it with just a can of paint. So you guys can kind of see there how uh, quickly we went from this piece all the way to what we're seeing now um, in this blue state versus the cream state earlier. Well, I'm just going to let y'all go. I'm going to continue on doing the sides and everything, but I just want to do um, wish you all a um, very blessed Thursday. I hope you all stay safe and stay dry and that you keep power. I will see you on the other side of the weekend, hopefully on a brighter day. So have a good one, everybody. Thanks so much for viewing. Sorry um, about this early broadcast, but we will reshare it um, at 7 p.m. when we are normally live. Hopefully the weather will be holding out, and in case it didn't, I didn't want you guys to miss out on this project. So I'll see y'all soon. Have a blessed one, everyone. Bye-bye.